This year has been a trying year for many in the Central Valley with unbearable heat and suffering from the drought. I am thankful that, this, that Senate Bill 559 has already received its first down payment this year, thanks to Governor Newsom. We have been, we have been allocated $200 million, $100 million this year and $100 million next year. It's because of the hard work of the many advocates who joined me today, including Senator Bradford, who's been an amazing um, colleague and champion for the Valley as well, and who have pushed to have the voice of the Central Valley heard, that we are able to celebrate this win. While there is room for celebration, I urge you all to continue your advocacy. The funding we previously received is just a drop in the ocean. California is in a mega drought right now, and it's projected that we will continue to have droughts. These droughts will disrupt our food supply chain and impact the ability of farmers to produce crops, and it will also impact farm workers and the communities that they live in. This investment definitely helps but is in no way complete. Many of the state's water infrastructure canals still need repairs and many of our agricultural workers will still be without water this year and possibly next year. Additional funding is needed to continue to move us forward and to ensure that human security is not threatened by limits on our ability to provide water for our drinking and growing needs. Human security, as we have found this past year, means so much more than just in any physical sense. It means ensuring that people have adequate, healthy access to food. It means that people have access to clean water so that they can bathe their children, cook their food, even flush their toilets. And it means that we have enough water to grow our crops and our economies. It means that we can feed our families and can afford food at the grocery store. While I am, once again, very happy that the Central Valley and the state's water needs were not forgotten, we still have a long way to go. And I will continue to fight to ensure that here in California, everyone has access to clean water. This investment and our funding plan is just the first step. I look forward to working with you all on those that remain. I want to remind everyone that Senate Bill 559 is to provide $785 million to four different canals that are in desperate need of repair that will provide water for 31 million Californians, including Southern California, Los Angeles, uh, the city of Los Angeles. And um, I would like to give an opportunity to my good friend and colleague, Senator Bradford, to say a few words. Good afternoon, and it's truly an honor to join Senator Hurtado, who is a true warrior when it comes to the Central Valley and the needs of the Central Valley and has been a true champion on fighting for water resources in that area. So she deserves a round of applause, really, and she couldn't have done it without the amazing support behind, but uh, since she's been here, she's made sure that the Central Valley is a priority here in this building. I've learned a lot from her in the short period of time that we have served together, but she's made it very clear water is critical, and we all should know that, and uh, what the Central Valley provides to California and this nation is critical. I mean, 40 percent of our produce comes out of California, and a lot out of it, Cal uh, the Central Valley, and not just our farming needs, but as uh, uh, other industrial uh issues also in Central Valley. So we appreciate her and I stand in strong support of SB 559 and whatever she needs to continue this fight, I'll be standing there with her. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Bradford, for all your support and for being here today. It means a lot to, to me and it means a lot to uh, all those behind me and uh, 31 million Californians. <laughs> Uh, up next, I want to uh, give an opportunity to Danny Merkley from the California B Farm Bureau to uh, come up and say a few words. Is he here? Oh, not here. Okay, well, uh, Adam. Adam here. Okay, so we have Adam Borchardt of the California Fresh Fruit Association. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Borchardt. I'm speaking today on behalf of the California Fresh Fruit Association. The association represents farmers, producers, packers, and shippers of table grapes and tree fruit grown in California, especially in the Central Valley. We, uh, of the, uh, for the commodities we represent, 
90 to 100 percent of the domestic U.S. production is grown right here in California. We represent California businesses that employ California farm workers that grow California crops for California uh, consumers. Water is the lifeblood of agriculture, and agriculture is the economic engine for our Central Valley, for its people and its communities. The arteries that deliver this lifeblood are canals and water conveyance systems, the Front Current Canal, the Delta Mendota Canal, and the California Aqueduct. Our forefathers had the vision and foresight to build these projects to sustain our people and grow our state's economy. However, since these projects were constructed 50 to 60 years ago, we have not done the necessary repairs to maintain them. For a state population that is now twice the size, an economy that is many times larger. Additionally, with the current and impending challenges presented by climate change and other climatic stressors, it's more important than ever to have these systems function and to do so reliably. We need to invest in our existing infrastructure, infrastructure that is already built and that up to now has allowed the Central Valley's economy to prosper. With vision, this infrastructure will sustain our region, our state, and our people for decades to come. That is why the California Fresh Fruit Association has been a strong supporter of Senator Hurtado's SB 559. We thank the Senator and the other elected officials gathered today for their tireless work to advocate on behalf of the Central Valley and its people. Um, I now have the privilege of, to introduce Tulare County Supervisor Eddie Valero. Mr. Supervisor. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope we're having a great day. I just want to say that when Senator Melissa Hurtado first introduced and was crafting this legislation, she held her first press conference in Terrabella, the heart of the Central Valley. And just want to share that the State Water Project and the Central Valley Project facilities are the backbone of the state's economy. And as mentioned, over 31 million Californians depend on the water that flows through these conveyances. They quench a thriving agricultural history, over seven billion in total growth production value in Tulare County alone. We are the heart of California, not the armpit of California. They help our state to be more resilient to the impacts of climate change that Senator Melissa Hurtado has been advocating for. By moving significant amounts of water when it is wet for storage and use during the inevitable future droughts that we will potentially or have already seen. Conveyance improvement work that has already begun can be completed through additional funding partnerships, all of whom stand to benefit from increased resiliency of California's conveyance systems. Unfortunately, this infrastructure, including roads, canals, and bridges, have been damaged, as mentioned, damaged by decades of subsidence resulting in unnecessary reduction of flow capacity. We're talking about 15 to 60 percent, a significant increase every year in operational as well as in power costs, and that equates to 15 to 30 million annually. There's a lack of attention to managing water that damages our agricultural businesses, threatens the water supply for hundreds of community members, including communities like Easterosi, like um, Ivanhoe, Traver, as well as other communities across the Central Valley, and including millions of disadvantaged individuals and reduces our resilience to climate change. It is essential that we act now to repair and restore our failing water delivery systems for the good of our community members, for the good of our businesses, and to prepare for continued weather emergencies such as the current drought we are living through now. The time for investment is now, and the time to get things done is now. Thank you for your attention to this matter, Senator Melissa Hurtado. Thank you, uh, Supervisor. I know you spoke to about uh, Tulare County and how um, communities in Tulare County uh, 
and throughout the valley uh, will be the most impacted by the lack of investment, the lack of attention um, when it comes to water and water infrastructure and needs. Um, here today we have several of those communities. I know last the last press conference we had, um, uh, we had uh, Frank Galaviz from the Tiviston Community Service District and he's joining us here again today in support. Uh, happy to report that they have uh, water established once again. But now we have another community, uh, the community of Woodville in Tulare County, who's also without water at the moment. So this is the, the continued struggle. And I know that there's other communities uh, throughout California that are without water. Uh, it's no longer something that is just part of the Central Valley. This is going to be a Western states issue. And this is why we need to uh, start uh, focusing and investing now. I, I wanna give an opportunity uh, either to uh, the mayor or the city manager for the community of Lindsay uh, to speak a little bit about how uh, the canals impact uh, their community. And we have uh, the uh, mayor, uh, Ramona, uh, from the city of Lindsay. Hello. My name is Ramona Cadillo. I'm the mayor of uh, Lindsay, and I came out here because I want to support Melissa's 559 bill. In the city of Lindsay, I can tell you right now, um, it's we've just gone to a, a, down to a four on our water conservation. If it gets any worse, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it is really imperative that we take this bill and really consider the things that we need, whatever we can to help her get this through. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my city manager, Joe Tanner. Joe has a few more things that he probably can bring to the table in regards to our city. Thank you, Mayor, and then thank you, Senator Hurtado. Uh, for the city of Lindsay, uh, water security is going to be extremely important for the city moving forward over the next decade, uh, especially when it comes to the the, the uh, capacity of the, of the Fry and Kern Canal. At one point, the city was, was using about 70, 75 percent of the canal's water, and we're down to about 30 percent, which is a which is basically a reflection of a, an overall deduction of water usage of about six, or water availability of about 60 percent in total. Uh, it also puts us in, in considerable danger if we ever have uh, any kind of major fire incident in town or if we have one of our wells break down. So moving forward with uh, uh, secured funding for water infrastructure to in, ensure the health and safety of, of our water for our citizens is extremely important. And as, uh, as a state, I feel it's very important that we all get behind that. Thank you very much. And thank you to the, again to the Senator for pushing forward on this issue. Thank you. Um, up next, I'd like to have a council member for uh, the city of Kalinga to also uh, give a little bit of background as to the impacts of uh, water that goes through these canals uh, through the Central Valley. And uh, with that, I have Adam. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Atkinson, Councilman for the City of Kalinga. Um, this impacts Kalinga very deeply. Uh, we get our water from the canal, and these um, investments haven't happened in a long time. They really need to happen. Uh, some of the things that have happened in Kalinga is we've had our water allocation cut by 75%. 75%, just think about that number right now. Imagine you, your water gets cut by 75%, what are you gonna do? Well, we've been told that if we go over our 25% that we have left, that we're gonna get sued. So we've declared an emergency in uh, the city of Kalinga. Uh, we're trying to get everyone to conserve water. We've had to raise rates by over three times the amount that they were paying before. We were at $2.20 something cents per thousand gallons of water used. Now we're at $7.50 per thousand gallons of water used. So this impacts us very, you know, very deeply. And we are not a rich town. We are a very poor town. We are only hurting those people who can't afford it already. So I have nothing but praise and thanks for Senator Hurtado for taking this, taking up this issue and being a warrior for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. And up next, I have uh, Danny Merkley of the California Farm Bureau. 
Thank you. Um, again, Danny Merkley, I'm Director of Water Resources uh, for the California Farm Bureau, and I'm a fourth generation California farmer. Um, if California is serious about water resilience and addressing the changing uh, climatic conditions, we must invest in our water infrastructure. We must increase our water storage capacity to capture water when it comes and in the form that it comes. However, without a viable water conveyance system, it's all in vain. Senator Hurtado's um, SB 559 would make a substantial down payment on repairing our aging water infrastructure. It has been some 60 years since the majority of our water infrastructure was built at a time when California's population was about 17 million. We now have nearly 40 million people, almost three times what it was 60 years ago. Imagine your first car 60 years ago. It was a two-door, four-seater. It was great for getting you and your high school friends around. Imagine if you never changed the oil, replaced the brakes and tires over those 60 years. And now you expect it to provide transportation for you and your family of six. The repairs and the maintenance, the upgrades are far overdue. Thank you, Senator Hurtado, for carrying this legislation, for carrying SB 559, a much needed measure to fund the repairs and the maintenance for our California fish, the environment, the production of healthful food and farm products, and for drinking water for all Californians. Thank you. Well, I, there's plenty of stories to be shared here. There's, um, you know, every individual behind me has a story to tell about water, a uh, story how water has impacted them or their loved one, uh, because water is life, water is health, uh, and when you don't have enough access to water, health deteriorates, and so does life. So um, I want to thank all those that made the long drive to Sacramento today uh, for um, coming here to share their stories and uh, to fight for, you know, for water, for SB 559. And, and we hope that the amendments made are good ones because, um, you know, we're in a mega drought. We can't afford to uh, not invest in water for people because that's what this bill is about. This is about people. This is about the state of California. And I, I want to thank you once again for all making the trip. And uh, thank you so much. That, that concludes our conference.